Hello, princesses. Welcome back to Not Fit for Print Beauty with me, Rebecca. Today we are here to talk about the newly released Hourglass Velvet Story Lip Cream. We are going to talk about prices. We're going to do lip swatches, arm swatches, and we're going to compare to some of the most popular, obvious comparisons on the market with other brands. And I also have been playing with these for a while. So I I have some thoughts on them as well. So let's get started. We have a lot to do. So these little guys are $36 each. I have them linked below. They're available at Sephora. They're available on the Hourglass site itself. At $36, they are one of the, if not the, um, most priciest in this kind of creamy, moussey lip product formula that's getting so popular right now. So Hourglass, of course, a brand that for for sure leads the way on the vegan, um, no cruelty to animals front. I mean, they are, they do not test on animals. They're 100% vegan. They can back all that up. They lead the way. Mm, unfortunately, they trail the way when we talk about inclusivity in terms of powder shades. We're not dealing with one of their powder products today, but I did want to mention it because it is something that in the beauty community we should all be aware of. They have some work to do with their powder products, this not being one of them, but I did want to mention it because it all relates to Hourglass. All right, getting into this lip cream. They are, as I said, weighing in on the lip cream front, this kind of moussey, uh, this kind of moussey new take on the liquid lipstick. Not so new, but in the air, light floats over the lips. These are supposed to be much more mask friendly. More on that on my thoughts in the end. But this is supposed to float over the lips and provide a soft focus um, in a number of colors. We have six colors in the collection. I've picked up three, so I have 50% of the collection here. I picked up Touch, which is a neutral pink. Indulge, which is a neutral rose. I'm a neutral girl, what can I say? And I picked up Pure that I'm holding in my hand now, which is a straight up rose. And I'm actually wearing right now, you'll see them all lip swatched and arm swatched, but I'm actually wearing a combination of Pure, the rose color, with Touch, the neutral pink over the top, just to tone it down because it was looking a little pink compared to my shirt. So I mixed them. There are three other shades that I didn't pick up, a berry, a kind of a browner honey, which would have been really pretty, and a mauve, so you can still get those. I think they sold out during the Sephora sale because they were available the last day of the Sephora sale, but they will restock, and like I said, they're also available on the Hourglass site. So these are on the pricier side. It's, I want to compare it, let me just say, there's no sense in keeping it until the end. I want to talk about these in comparison to the NARS Air Matte and to the Pat McGrath Liquilust, which are very similar in the, in the fact that they're all doe foot applicators with a kind of moussey texture that, like I said, glides over the lips and is more mask friendly. Uh, supposedly, than some other shades. The the return of the liquid lipstick in this kind of air moussey formula is an interesting thing. Now, I, not to bore those of you who have been with this channel a lot, but for anyone who's new here, I come to this from um, working on the editorial side of the beauty and fashion industry. Uh, I'm an editor and writer. I, I just did an article that kind of relates to this with denim, and I know you're gonna say, how does denim apply to lipstick? It does, because there's a comfort factor in both. You see, the denim industry lately has, and I've mentioned this before, suffered from a kind of comfort identity. The denim that we all wore as kids was fairly rigid and can be a little bit tight, right? And once we introduced Lycra into denim and people started being comfy, the general public is really demanding denim now that kind of feels like pajamas. We're going to get into how this relates to lipstick. Stay with me here. But we even, I just did a piece on the fact that there's so many brands now offering one size fits all denim, you know, frame good American, these, these jeans that one size fits six sizes, and they're so stretchy, you would think you were in sweatpants. Um, we try every now and again in the denim industry to reintroduce a more rigid fit, and people want the look, but they miss the comfort, and they run back to those kind of lycra-filled styles. Okay, so why am I talking about denim with regard to lipstick? It's a comfort thing. What have been the most popular lipsticks on the market? 
Oh, Charlotte Tilbury's Hyaluronic Happy Kiss. Um, Huda just released it, released a new Power Bullet, right? That is a more hydrating formula. Those hydrating lip slicks and the uh, all, all of these kind of materials. I know that uh, Pat McGrath has one, and and um, all of these really gentle, kind of glowing lipsticks that you can almost apply like a bit of a shiny balm, but with more uh, more color to them, more opacity to them. They're, we don't really want to let go of those. They are really comfortable, but they're not necessarily mask friendly. And with anything in fashion and beauty, when we have one end, there'll be a pushback from the other end. Thus the return of liquid, liquid lipstick that would be more mask friendly, would be matte, but would also be comfortable. And that is the goal of all of these that we're seeing here. Bring back a liquid lipstick, which was traditionally uncomfortable. Bring back matte, which has been traditionally fairly uncomfortable. And bring it back in a comfortable way. And thus we have this kind of moussey formulas trying to merge comfort and that matte look. So I do have some thoughts on how these little fellas compare to the competition. And you might have some other brands that you feel do this kind of moussey air lip texture that you might want to talk to me about below in the comments. What I first want to do is I just want to go, as I told you, I'm mixing two shades right now on my lips, but I want to go to a little montage that I've put together of individually lip swatching the three colors, 50% of the collection that I have purchased, along with some arm swatches. And then I want to come back and talk to you about my thoughts. So stay right there. Okay, not huge differences among the colors that I chose. You'd think one person was choosing them. Oh, she is, it's me. I obviously have my preferences. I wish I need to start branching out a bit more. I know, I know. Um, do I like this lip product? Yes, I do. I do very, very much. Um, it's pricey though, $36 as compared to the Liquilust, which is 30 by Pat McGrath. And the we have the NARS Air Matte, which is $26 plus the Liquilust and the NARS come in eight shades each. And our Hourglass product here that we're talking about today only comes in six shades, if that matters to you. Um, here are my thoughts. Pat McGrath Liquilust and the NARS Air Matte are better for masks. They go on and they stay on. The Hourglass, though overall I like the product the best of the three, I'll tell you why in a moment. Not the best for masks. I have it on now and I've been wearing this uh, for about 20 minutes. <laughs> so the this, and you know, let me just tell you right now, nowhere in the literature of the uh, Hourglass product does it say transfer proof. So it's not a fault, it is not a fail. It does not claim to be transfer proof. What tends to happen is we've, we're used to kind of the other ones that are transfer proof and so we assume. Um, in terms of comfort, this is, I think the, the Hourglass is the most comfortable of the three. I think the Hourglass is the most comfortable and the most transferable. Kind of interesting. I found both Pat McGrath and NARS to be comfortable. A lot of people told me they felt the Pat McGrath was not comfy. And my question to you is, and this is absolutely no disrespect because I'm right there with you. Did you find it uncomfortable or did you feel that it should be uncomfortable because it's a kind of indelible liquid lipstick? Sometimes I don't know if, and I'm the same way, do I really feel that or do I think I feel that? I, I find all three of these comfy. Here's my issue. Pat McGrath Liquilust, little bit too thin. In my head, I start thinking it's uncomfortable. I generally put a gloss over it. Really, really pretty. The gloss wears off. The uh, Liquilust is still there. Super, super pretty, but takes away the non, the fact that it doesn't transfer, ruins that. So I don't, it kind of takes away the point, but I tend not to wear this without a gloss over it lately. I've noticed that. Uh, make no mistake, I do not like the NARS Air Matte. It, um, 
is too thick and I feel like it shows lines and really sits on the lips and not in a good way. The Hourglass promises to sit on the lips and blur too. I'm not feeling that the NARS does that in a good way. I think it's a little too thick. Uh, the Hourglass, though it is the priciest of the three, is kind of like Goldilocks, just right. It is just in the middle. It is not too thick. It is not too thin. It is extremely comfortable, matte, but very, very creamy, almost like a very creamy matte lipstick. I have, you will have no trouble with this drying your lips out. If you felt that the Pat McGrath Liquid Lust did, try this Hourglass product. It will not dry your lips out. It really won't. I don't feel like I need a gloss over the top. And again, with the Pat McGrath, I have no idea if I actually do or if it's in my head. There's a psychological component. So this one is my favorite of these three. All three, again, have that kind of doe foot applicator. All three have a moussey texture that lays atop and should blur the lips, and all three do that. But once again, we're not gonna have a transferability -ish, uh, thing with this. It's gonna transfer, and maybe it won't get on your mask as much as other products will, um, but it is not transfer proof. But it's super comfy. So I really, really, really like it. I want to hear your thoughts about lipsticks under masks, about this matte texture and this moussey formula. What other brands do you think would kind of give the Hourglass a run for its money? I just really want to hear your thoughts and hear if you purchase these and if you got them in at the end of the sale and save some money, the Sephora sale I mean. Let me know all those things below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I hope you did. Hey, if you haven't already done so, I would sure love it if you could subscribe to my channel and help me build this community. And I will see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.